All right, I made it down here to the Forks Market in downtown Winnipeg. I'm going to head on into the market now. Again, this is one of the premier attractions here in Winnipeg, and I'm visiting in winter. It's one of my favorite coffee shops here, the Bulls and Horses, which is somewhere around here. So the coffee here is incredible. You can see the lineup. Hello. You see the next thing? really good nitro cold brew from Fools and Horses. Always a good cup of coffee. So from here, I'm gonna head over to the river, check out the riverfront, do the rounds of sightseeing here in Winnipeg, and then I gotta go return my rental car. So, short and sweet. Just came here for the coffee, basically. I would like to get a beer though, because beer is actually restricted in the community where I live in the Arctic. So it'd be nice to at least partake once. So this is the Brazen Haze Bomb Juicy IPA. This is the first beer that I've had in over 100 days now, 103 days, give or take, since I moved up to the Arctic. Alcohol is completely banned where I live now, so this is definitely a treat, and I love hazy IPAs, so cheers. Really juicy, and not a ton of hops, so I wouldn't go as far as to call it an IPA, but uh, definitely a good beer. So they haven't put down any sand or salt really, so it is pretty slippery, unfortunately. So it's called the Forks because this is the fork of the Red River and the Assiniboine River. And they meet here. It's a historic meeting place used for centuries here in Canada, right in Winnipeg. Winnipeg was founded in this location because of the confluence of the two rivers. And it is so slippery, oh my goodness. I might as well be wearing skates today, folks. This is unbelievable. I'm just sliding along. Probably have better success walking here on the snow itself. Continuous history of 6,000 years and counting. Cool. Oh, a map of all the national parks in Canada. That's interesting. And you go up to Nunavut where I live right now. There's a few, very hard to get to and very expensive. And zooming in on Manitoba's national parks. So we're right there. So the weather actually isn't terribly bad yet. Manitoba winters can be brutal, just like those in Nunavut where I live now. Minus 30s, minus 40 wind chills and so forth. But luckily it's probably about minus two today or minus three, not too bad. So it's a slow walk for sure with all this ice, but an enjoyable one. There's basically nobody out. So beautiful views of the Red River. I'm thankful that it's pretty mild today, just about zero degrees. So I don't have to wear a toque or gloves or anything of the sort. Beautiful views. And right across from me here is the cathedral. I covered the cathedral back in my 2020 Winnipeg video. So check out that video if you are so inclined. I'll put the link right up here on the screen for you. So you can see that it mentions that this is a flood prone river. There was a massive flood on this river back in 1998. I remember it vividly. Massive evacuation, a lot of destruction along its route all the way through North Dakota. 
This is the Canadian Museum of Human Rights, which I believe opened in 2009. It's one of the newer buildings here in Winnipeg. Very unique in terms of architectural design as well. I heard that the views of the city from the top floors are, are incredible. Definitely want to check it out on a future trip at least. So I'm trudging my way through the snow right now. Mostly for a good view. I want to get the bridge and the museum in the same frame if I can. It's probably easier to walk on this as well, to be honest. So this is the Louis Riel Esplanade Bridge. Very iconic structure, one of the major landmarks of the city. And that connects the forks over here with St. Boniface and the French Quarter right across the bridge. Again, check out my summer 2020 video on Winnipeg if you are inclined to learn a bit more about the city in more depth. Interesting artwork here, a bunch of bicycles basically assembled together into a urban artwork and the downtown Winnipeg skyline in the distance with a pretty decent sled hill there for the kids. So this is the festival park and stage and the city plaza. It's great to be back in Winnipeg. Definitely enjoyed my time here. You knocked me down, swept my feet off the ground, left me on the floor. Hard to resist, got me looking like this, like the one before. Cause I must be strong. Cause this might go on for long. Cause I was wrong, and he's always there for me. Cinnaboyne Park. I've never been here before. This is completely new experience for me here in Winnipeg. Using the rental car to get out a bit further afield to check out some of these sites that I've never been to before. So this is the largest park in Winnipeg. So behind me is the pavilion at Assiniboine Park, which is home to one of the city's premier art galleries. I'm not sure if they're open today, but it's worth checking out perhaps. So unfortunately I don't have a lot of daylight left, but I'd hope to see a little bit of the park at least. You can see the sun is beginning to go down there in the distance. It's only 3.45 p.m. as well, so it's that time of year. Would have been nice to check out the zoo. I didn't really think about it until now, so you snooze, you lose, I guess. Pretty impressive pavilion building. It reminds me of one of the, I guess, National Park style buildings. It's very similar. It's got this almost half-timbered look to it, almost like it's straight out of Germany. Getting a little bit chilly out though. I think it's dipped down to about minus four now. But definitely enjoying my time in Assiniboine Park so far. It's just so quiet. So if you're looking for peace and solitude in Winnipeg, this is definitely the place to find it. Huge, what would be green space in the summer at least. I'm gonna head over to the pavilion. It looks like it is closed though because nobody is approaching those doors whatsoever. So it is a pretty impressive half timbered building. This could be straight out of Germany. You wouldn't expect to find uh, this type of architecture here. So, and it's not very kitschy either. It's actually quite well done. They are closed. Looks like they close at four o'clock PM. I just missed it, unfortunately. I'm gonna head down here through the park for a bit and then uh, head back towards the car on a different path. You gotta watch your step though. It's uh, very slippery. Thankfully, they did put some sand down, but just like the forks, it's just hovering around zero. So constantly melting and freezing and melting. So I've been in the Arctic for a hundred days straight. So I haven't really been able to get out and enjoy city life for a very long time. So I'm definitely enjoying this unexpected weekend trip to Winnipeg. So unfortunately my Osmo Pocket did die. It's just too cold outside now. I'd estimated at about minus five, 
It's getting pretty nippy out here, but great solitude out here in a Cinnaboyne Park. So this is just a stone's throw from the west end of Winnipeg. So it's pretty convenient uh, to come out here even from the airport. It's only about a 10 minute drive away and probably about the same, maybe a more close to 15 minutes from downtown Winnipeg. But great to be out in nature for a little while as the sun sets here and some great views of the pavilion behind me. And there's another half timbered building I just noticed right over there. All right, so good news, I was able to extend the rental by one day. So I'm gonna head out for some more sightseeing. So yeah, really nice guy. They're actually charging about $55 a day now. So I only paid $23 per day for my rental yesterday. He's agreed to honor that for today as well. So an extra day for 23 bucks, I'll take it. All right, I'm hanging out down here in Osborne Village. This is one of Winnipeg's most, I guess, bohemian hipster districts. You can see some bizarre murals there. It looks like almost a John Lennon. And another strange mural right over here with a green Buddha by the looks of it. So yeah, this is Osborne Village, hipster capital of Winnipeg, basically. A lot of boutique shops, vintage shops, etc. It's definitely an interesting vibe here. It's a little bit gritty, but I like it. Not a bad place. Gonna go to Starbucks. I know that's pretty yuppie of me, but it's right across the street, so I can't resist. Looks like there's a church over here as well. Pretty impressive. This is the historic Augustine Presbyterian Church, now United Church. Pretty beautiful church here in the center of Osborne Village. And across the road here is this pretty impressive mural. It's actually pretty warm outside today. It's about one to two degrees above zero, so not too bad at all. Definitely enjoying the warmer weather down here in Winnipeg. It is minus 41 with the wind chill up in Nunavut today, where I live now. So enjoying the comparably steamy weather here in Winnipeg, that's for sure. Great views of the Manitoba legislature behind me. Uh, it's always worth coming out here just to see the grand architecture from the early 20th century, right before my eyes here. So definitely a nice place for a walk. You can see an image of Queen Victoria, I believe in the middle there, which who would have been the queen at the time, I believe. And the park leading up towards downtown Winnipeg. And you can see they have this massive flag display at the very front, remembering the children that were lost and perished at Canada's residential boarding schools between 1876 and 1994. 
uh, grave sites were uncovered earlier this summer. So this has been on display since. So you can also see that this statue, I can't remember who was here. I believe this was the queen. I think this was Queen Victoria actually sitting here. If I re remember correctly from my previous vlog, I'm gonna have to check. But I believe this is the statue of Queen Victoria that has been toppled down uh, largely in response to the anti-colonial sentiment that surrounds residential schools and its legacies. So perfect views of the Legislative Assembly with this really moody blue sky above. Anyway, I'm heading through downtown Winnipeg now towards the Exchange District. All right, I made it down here to Winnipeg's Union Station. I've always thought that this building looks somewhat communist, like it's straight out of the Soviet Union. I'm not sure why. Looks like the train stations in Romania that I visited this past summer. But anyway, apart from its somewhat drab communist appearance, from here you can get a train all the way out to Halifax, Nova Scotia, or all the way west to Vancouver, British Columbia. Heading over to the Forks. So I wasn't aware of this, but there's actually a shortcut to the Forks through here. Last time I went all the way around, which was evidently pretty pointless. So you cross under this pretty sketchy train set of train tracks here by the Union Station. And when you emerge, you're at the Forks. So pretty convenient. Just off of Broadway here. All right, I'm over at the Forks Market again. Uh, I've got myself an Americano from the incredible Fools and Horses Cafe. If you ever find yourself in Winnipeg, make the trip down to the Forks and uh, try the Fools and Horses. It's probably the best coffee shop in Winnipeg, in my opinion. Unfortunately, the observation deck is closed, but here are some views of downtown Winnipeg, as good as I can offer them at least. So it is a beautiful evening here in downtown Winnipeg. The weather is pretty perfect. Very light wind, decent temperature just below zero, no snow, pretty clear night. They got these old rail cars here at the Forks Market as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the Forks Market. I don't think I'm going to be back here at all before I leave back for none of it. I'm going to walk to downtown, why not? All right, I made it into the Exchange District here in downtown Winnipeg. Figured I would soak up some of the sights downtown here before I head back. Beautiful Christmas tree here in downtown Winnipeg at the corner of Portage and Main, the city's major intersection. And some great views of downtown Winnipeg. I'm gonna call it a night and I will see you tomorrow.